Hey guys, John here, uh, able to pastor one of the churches in Manhattan right now and have the joy and privilege of sharing the Word of God with you. Uh, and the question I have for you is, how is your relationship with Jesus? Are you having a vibrant, rich, loving relationship with Jesus and do you come to know who He is? And that question really pivots around of who is Jesus in your life? Do you come to know Him? And is your understanding of Him based on of who He says He is or based on what other people are saying? Because lately, right now, I feel like a lot of people are saying, hey, I feel so distant from God, I don't know this Jesus. And it's because they're basing off of what other people are saying about Him. It's kind of like if you want to get to know me, right? I wouldn't like you just looking at my Instagram, watching this video, and then being like, oh, well, this guy, he likes pineapple shirts, he wears green, I just made up my mind. No, the best way to know me is talking to me directly. And if I were to try to get to know you, you wouldn't want me just being sus and like walking around, viewing your Instagram, talking to your friends. The best way to know you is talking to you, being with you, present with you. And something about us right now, we've diverted to, rather than going back to the Bible and recognizing what Jesus God himself says about himself, we care more what other people are saying about him. We're stuck on different ideologies, beliefs, thoughts, opinions, and everyone's talking about who's God and who's church and what's Jesus, but no one's reading the Bible or praying anymore. And that's something we're missing because Jesus himself talks about himself so that we would know who he is. In that sense, we need to come back to his truth and his word. Because let me ask you this, when it comes to your relationship with Jesus, are you more affected by the truth of who Jesus is or simply what you think about him? Are you more affected about knowing who Jesus is based on what other people say about him? Like, I'm afraid what other people think about him, so I approach Jesus only when I'm at church or only in this setting. Because that's about us understanding Jesus on our terms. It's not about understanding him according to the scripture or what he says about himself. You know, a little bit about me, I have an 18-month-old daughter, uh, her name's Talia, and you know, we have a great time. And understanding our relationship, she's learned over time to trust me more and have fun. She loves coming up to me and saying, Anna, Anna, and then she wants to be thrown up in the air. Sometimes we were by the pool, and the first time she was swimming, she was afraid at first, but over time, she grew to trust me so much, she just jumps into the water, knowing that I'll catch her. If Talia were to grow up and one day say to me, you know what, uh, you're not my father, would that change who I am to her? If she says to herself, you know what, I don't like you anymore, you upset me, I don't feel close to you, so you're not my father. I choose to say you're not my dad. Does that change who I am to her? No, it doesn't. I will always be her father. And in that same sense, God has not changed. What he says about himself has not changed, and yet we think what other people are saying is more important. And in that regard, that's what's depriving us of a rich, intimate, joyful relationship with Jesus. So how is your relationship with Jesus? That's why I want to go back to this truth, okay, about what Jesus himself says he is in Scripture. And in Colossians 1.15, it says this, that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That he is the image, not just the representation of God, not just the image, of, but he is the embodiment of the will of God. He is the fullness of the nature of God, that he is God. So if you want to know God, know Jesus. If you want to know who he is, understand that he is the firstborn of all creation, not just first in numerical order, but first in his class. He is a whole different person, a whole different nature. He is fully God and fully man, and he has made himself known. And that is an intimate reality of God. Do you know that God wants you to know him? He wants you to experience him. And that's why he's made himself manifest. Tell me this, are you experiencing God in your life? Because if you just know a bunch of stuff without experiencing it, it has no power to change you. And I think a lot of us are caught in that boat. We know so much, we know all these thoughts, but we're not hungry enough to experience it. But God himself wants you to experience it. He made himself visible, this image of Jesus. As much as you think I'm so distant from God because I'm basing off of what other people think, God himself is reaching out to you saying, I want you to experience me. Taste and see that the Lord is good and blesses those who take refuge in him. Take refuge in him, experience him, and come back to that reality. As it goes on, it also says this, For by him all things are created, both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Every single thing, invisible, visible, authorities, uh, domains, that Jesus is ruler of it all. And here's why I say, Jesus is cosmically supreme. 
I know when you look around at this world after coming through all these different things, there's so many things that fracture us and makes us afraid all the war going on in Ukraine, all these divisive political issues, we see within the global area, right, even inflation and economy, you can be afraid and see that's broken. But this is something that assures us about the truth of who Jesus is. All things have been created through him and for him. He has the fullness of authority over all things. He's cosmically supreme. Jesus is at work already in those levels, despite the brokenness. So the brokenness can make us afraid it can make us seem like we're not doing much or stuck, but that's not the truth. Jesus is at work and he is cosmically supreme in his nature. This is what Jesus is saying about himself. I am doing this and all things have been created through him and for him. So he is our hope. He is the one that's at work. So when we think about these things, don't just be crippled in fear. Don't just be divisive and fractured, but come back to the reality. I need to experience Jesus and run to you with these things. I need to realize that you're already at work. And as it goes on, it says this, that he is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is before all things and all things hold together. Not only is Jesus cosmically supreme, he is intimately supreme, which means he is the one who is so aware of all of your fears, doubts, thoughts, dreams, ambitions. He knows the things that no one else knows. And in fact, what he's saying is he holds all things together. And one of the realities is this, that Jesus is intimately supreme. That he knows you more than you know yourself. And what does that mean as intimate supremacy? Not just knowing you, that he loves you more than you could love yourself. The lie of this generation is somehow self-love, self-care alone can save you and fix you. That you just gotta love yourself better. But you know what I realized? People hide more, people lie more, people create a fake Instagram persona, but they don't feel safe and secure or nor have the peace. And this is where this reality comes. Jesus is intimately supreme and he so loves you and cherishes you enough to know you more than you can know yourself, love you more than you can love yourself. And in that sense, he loves your parents more than you can love your parents. He loves the church more than you can love the church. He loves this world more than the world can try to love itself, even in its broken state. And we see that. Humanity is not the answer. You are not the answer. I am not the answer. We don't have to be the answer because Jesus is already the answer. And yet, there's so many of our own tendencies where we want to be like, hey, I have to come up with the answer. I have to come up with the solution. I have to fix myself. Humanity is the solution. We're going to focus on mankind. And it's not. Jesus is the answer. This is what he says about himself, that he is already there. And in him, all things hold together. Aren't you tired of trying to hold everything together? Hold my school, hold my parents, hold my image. I need to make everything work. Everything dependent upon me. Man, I would break. And you don't have to do that. The world is not the answer. Humanity is not the answer. We can try our best, but the best thing we have to do is come to Jesus and whatever he says, we do. Because he's already at work and in him, he holds all things together. You can let it go. Run to Jesus and experience this intimate truth. And in the very end of this, he also says in Colossians that he is also the head of the body, the church that Jesus is the head of the church. And this is one thing I wanna encourage you, as he's cosmically supreme and intimately supreme, even within his church, that he is the head. So we see brokenness within ourselves. We see brokenness in the world. And I'm saying, don't be afraid. Come to Jesus with it. He's already at work holding all things. And even in the church, in that brokenness, come to him. Don't stand in the background judging the church, judging people, being afraid of what other people think of me or say about me. Because all we're doing as we come here is coming to Jesus, knowing that we're Broken people in a beautiful process. No one's demanding perfection. God's not saying be perfect. God's saying I'm gonna perfect you. But in order for you to do that, just come into my presence and recognize that I am intimately aware. I am supremely aware on all levels. And even in my church, it is God's church, no human's church. And that's where you can have this great joy coming back to the church family, church body, knowing that Jesus is the head at work in the church. And that's where Paul says that this is the hope of the gospel. It is the hope that the world so needs right now, that you need, that I need, that everyone around us need. See, Jesus isn't just my hope. Jesus isn't just our hope. He's not just the hope of the church. He is the hope for all people. Whether you're a believer or not, this is what we come to realize, that Jesus is cosmically supreme, intimately supreme. He is the head of the church, and he is the one that holds all things together. And this is the hope that we so need in our life that we've forgotten. And what am I saying in that sense? Wherever you're at in your life, this is the time to run to Jesus, right? Even in ourselves we're broken. Even in the church it may seem broken. Even in this world it may seem broken. And Jesus is saying, that's all right, because I'm the hope. 
you don't have to be the answer and solution. Come back to me. And more than ever, run to Jesus. If you feel like you've been distant in your faith, don't have that faith, this is what I'm saying. You need to experience it, not just know it. Crawl to Jesus. If your back has been turned, then turn to Jesus. And if you're just struggling so far out and you're listening to this and you're like, I kind of want to experience it, but I'm so far away, talk to your pastor, talk to your teachers, talk to someone and say, pray with me so I can come back to Jesus. Because that's what I need more than ever in this life because he is the hope. And so he is for you. Aren't you tired holding everything together? You don't have to. Jesus has been faithful through and through and he is the hope that we so need, that the world so need, that the church so needs. Let's come and submit to that truth in prayer and just receive it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, um, thank you so much for this gift of life you've given us. Really bless uh, every single person that gets to watch this or hear this message. May they not just consume it or see it, but Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we receive the truth of who you are and start to just come back to you. Not what other people say you are, not what we just think who you are, but exactly what you say about yourself that you have made yourself visible, that you have allowed us to have an intimate relationship where we can experience you and not just know you. And in this sense that you're cosmically supreme and intimately supreme and you're the head of the church and in you all things hold together. So right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, why don't you just let go of the things that you're trying to hold together on your own efforts? Can you remember that Jesus cares for you more than you can care for yourself, that he loves you more than you can love yourself, that he is more aware and understands you more than you can understand yourself. And in this, give it to him. And in this reality, may he be the hope of our lives, the hope of his church, the hope of this world, because God, you're already at work, you're already moving, and you've already made yourself known. And may we experience that. In the precious Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.